What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jacob Potato, and with a hiatus again, I seem to be doing a lot of these these days. I am back, and with my triumphant return, I am going to start talking about the Xbox One conference. And those dirty scumbags over at Microsoft have went and done it. I now officially want an Xbox One. For flip sake, honestly. To be honest, when I first started watching this, I was thinking the entire time, go on then, Microsoft, make me want a PlayStation 4 or more. But they went and done the complete opposite. You've probably all seen this anyway, but I'm just going to give my opinions on it and whatnot. But the first game that they shown was the new Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. That is pretty cool. I am a bit of a fan of the Metal Gear Solid series. Quite enjoyed it. An open world Metal Gear, the, si the fact that you can kind of lie on the side of your horse to stop people from seeing you. There's like a pile of cool mechanics, close quarter combat mechanics and all that there. And then we got to see the new punished snake, so we don't have Solid Snake or Big Boss, but it's punished snake now. And then they made Per Hideo struggle to speak English. Uh. Um, so they started talking about the Xbox 360, they're saying they're not killing it off yet. Why they're releasing a new Xbox 360? I do not even know. They're obviously trying to keep it going for a wee bit longer, trying to get them last couple of pounds or dollars out of it before it literally does die off. The new gold system, so they're kind of going the way of PlayStation with us. They've got the two games per month, two free games a month, and the first ones are starting off with our Assassin's Creed 2 and Halo 3. Could be better to start the whole thing off with. with all the games that they've had in the last couple of years, they could have started off with some better ones. But you can't really complain. So the three new games for the Xbox 360 that are coming out are World of Tanks. I've never played it, so I don't really know much about it. But to me, that looks kind of poo, I'm not going to lie. It's free to play, so what more could you ask for, really? Max, that looks really cool, this whole interesting pen feature thing. I, I'm really quite excited about that. And then we have Dark Souls 2 and also Grand Theft Auto 5. Both of them are going to be great games. And then that moves straight into the Xbox One section of the whole thing. And that's where the most of it comes from. First thing that's shown off was Rise. Rise looks pretty good. We've never seen many games actually do first person hack and slash thing in a Rome setting like this and it's proper realistic stuff, you know, with the shields coming up over the guys and protecting each other. And they could have kept more people alive during that section, really. They just kill people off for the sake of killing them off. There's a lot of stuff to talk about here, so I'm just going to try and rhyme through it as quickly as possible. Yeah, I like the look of Rise, exclusive launch title. All these games are exclusive, so there's no point in talking about that. Sunset Overdrive from Insomniac. I am a great fan of Insomniac. Love Ratchet and Clank, favourite game series ever. And what is cool about Sunset Overdrive is, is that they have this weapon madness thing that Insomniac does so well, like all these great and crazy weapons that they have. And so it's going to be like an open world zombie game, it's going to be class systems, there's going to be power ups in the form of like drink cans, I don't know what the flip map was, and there's going to be like free running and stuff. This generation of like gaming is going to be completely open world, that is the way that it's going to go, it's all going to be open world, it's all going to be this whole dynamic thing, that is what this generation is going to be, it's going to be open world. Forza, Forza came on, eh, I don't like racing games, especially Forza, play Forza 2 for a while, it's meh, I didn't really like it. It does look extremely pretty. Great graphics and whatnot, but eh, I'm just going to skip over that. Minecraft. They should have updated the graphics of Minecraft. They should have made it more HD or something instead of just bigger maps. It's going to be cool and people are going to buy it. I'm probably going to buy it if I buy the Xbox One for its sake, but yeah. Quantum Break looks ridiculously good. Story-wise, not that way, but I mean just the way that it looks. The graphics of it are just insane. Like, that's L.A. Noir type of graphics, but even more realistic. D4... That's a Kinect game. Didn't really take much interest in it. Project Spark Games Creator thing. Looks quite good. It obviously was not in real time. There were sections of it that did look real time, but this obviously wasn't. And that whole terraforming thing should have been made into its own game, rather than having this whole game creator thing behind it. Um, at this point, I kind of went and got my dinner, so I don't really know much else about happened between this and the Twitch TV announcement for Killer Instinct. So unless they just talked about Killer Instinct for the next five minutes, and uh, they just went on to Twitch TV. No more Microsoft points, only real money. Crimson Dragon. It could have been good. I wish they had some sound playing in it. It would have been made it a lot better. Dead Rising 3, that looks pretty good. 
A lot of zombies. Did you see the amount of zombies on that there screen? Holy dong, that was ridiculous. The guy was driving through them in the car and that was actually forcing him to stop. The way the zombies were coming up in the bonnet trying to maul at this guy. That is ridiculous. That looks insanely good. Battlefield 4. Awkward moment. No sound. The guys in this stage were like, oh Greg, what do we do here? But once it did start getting playing, it was it did look pretty good. Um, squad commands, so the guy was able to issue commands. I would prefer that they would show the multiplayer. I don't care about the single player in Battlefield because the you know I haven't even played the single player in my own Battlefield yet, let alone uh, this one. Um, boat warfare, so we got to see the boat warfare for the first time. Some destructible environments. He shot the barrel and the plane slid down and took out the group of guys. Below is the top down adventure, so that's one of the indie games that are coming up. It looks interesting. Halo 5, should have seen that coming. You know, I was like, oh, this is going to be some new game. I wonder what it's going to be. I wonder what they're going to be talking about. No, and then it just turned out to be Halo 5. Per Kingdom Soldier was thinking, this is going to be Destiny! Yay! No, sorry Kingdom Soldier, it's not. <laughs> and finally, holy dung, now this game has got me stoked for the Xbox One. This game is single-handedly making me want an Xbox One, and that is Titanfall. This game is like Gundam Wing with Call of Duty. It is awesome. So the premise behind Titanfall is that it's set in the future, there's a war going on, two factions, I don't know how many factions but this is what I'm kind of get from it. There's no single player, it's all multiplayer so it's kind of going the way of Brink but if they do this right it could be awesome. So then each character once he gets a certain amount of kills I think gets the Titan from the sky and the Titan just falls down wherever he specifies and then you just jump into it, it grabs you and chucks you into its chest and then when you get out of it, it defends itself so that nobody can take over it. That is ridiculous. They showed nothing but multiplayer for Titanfall and it just looks awesome. Overall I was sitting thinking throughout the whole thing, oh, there's nothing here that really makes me want an Xbox, there's nothing here that's you know standing out from the crowd, but when Titanfall came out and actually now what I think about it, a lot of the games are really good. Titanfall is the main one that has stood out, it is the COD killer. This is the game that everyone's been waiting for, shut out Call of Duty, once and for all really. And it's going to do it, it literally is, and it's exclusive on the Xbox One, so there is the only reason so far that I have to buy this console is just Titanfall. And the fact is, is that with Destiny, they're talking about that they're having cross-platform saves. So I'd be able to get Destiny on my Xbox, buy the Xbox One later on, and then keep playing with my Destiny account on the Xbox. So there is everything that I need for to get the Xbox One. I'm going to hold any opinions that I have until the until the PS4 conference and see what they have to offer. If they have any really cool looking games, anything like Tales of Zillia or Nino Kune, then that might sway my opinion a bit more. If they show Kingdom Hearts 3 as a launch title, I am sorry, but I just cannot get an Xbox One until I get Kingdom Hearts 3. And also because some people might have forgot that Microsoft haven't really been doing the best things for the Xbox One, especially with these used game things and also this always online DRM thing. So you can't forget about that, even though the game seems particularly awesome and also the price is a ridiculous factor as well at 429 if you try and buy the bundle that's going to be literally about 470 pounds maybe 550 dollars after everything's sorted out so hopefully nothing will be too bad a wee bit down the line once titanfall comes out hopefully they'll also have some new games announced and some good bundles going on but anyway guys that is my thoughts on the xbox one hopefully i will have this up tonight or today for you american weirdos but as always my name is jack potato i will see you again tomorrow night once i watch the ps4 conference because it's like one in the morning and i am not staying up for that crap my name is jack potato i am a christian and i will see you all tomorrow